Hey YouTube, Camp Burn. Just wanted to uh, give you a quick picture underneath. Uh, this is my three wire O2 sensor. I went ahead and bought a new one for this project. Um, it was actually universal, had four leads. Uh, with this particular model, the Chevrolet, what you would think would be the ground uh, was not actually the ground if you read the literature closely on these four wires. You look at them close, they have a black wire, a gray wire, and two white wires, okay? Your two white wires are the um, are actually the positive and negative of the heater. Your gray wire is actually the ground, which you don't need if you have a good engine ground and your exhaust system is grounded. And the black wire is actually your signal wire. So what I basically did was take a universal and I spliced it into my original harness. Uh, because I'm not going to tie in to the O2 sensor down here um, underneath the, the engine. Um, next, this uh, next segment of the video is I'm actually going to take you behind the glove box where my computer is. I'm going to find the signal wire up in the um, up behind the glove box. So I'm going to tie into everything behind the glove box and around the computer for my uh, EFIE. But this is what the O2 sensor looks like with the extender in place. I've protected it in a wire wrap. Um, I knew I'd had it hooked up right because I left my original connector in place on the harness and it has one purple wire and two brown wires. The two brown wires are the heater the purple wire is the sensor and I just have to locate that purple wire up in the cab and uh, we're good to go so stand by we're gonna move into the glove box okay for clarity I went ahead and pulled the glove box off for the uh, uninitiated who's ever had a uh, 95 99 Chevrolet and you're looking at the glove box which they don't open that far and you're kind of looking at it and you're for the life of you you can't figure out how to get the glove box door off it's pretty simple the glove box actually hinges on the bottom it has free floating hinges they fit right on these little round knobs right here on both sides and what you do is when you want to remove your glove box at the very top on each corner push in on the side of the glove box at the very top here and because there's little rubber stoppers that stick in here so if you push in on both sides it'll free these rubber stoppers from the side you've got a, uh, a stop strap right here on the right side you just pull that stop stop that stop strip right here off of this side and free it that will allow the whole glove box to pivot down once it pivots down it's going to free off these areas right here and you can just take the glove box and uh, set it off to the side. Now if you see here's my computer. Now there's several purple wires and I've been looking and trying to find the purple wire and I've been trying to match it up to my manual and this dark brown wire here actually matches the heater wires and then I have a purple wire right here but there's also a purple wire in this top bundle so basically what I'm going to do is I have a good ground on this support bar going across so I'm going to ground it on a, a tab I'm going to remove a little bit of insulation off these wires run the motor heat the whole system up and I'm going to test those signal wires and if I get a signal wire anywhere from 100 millivolts to 1,000 millivolts fluctuating, then I know that's my uh, signal wire. Once I find that signal wire, I'll cut it. We're going to restart the uh, film, and I'll show you how to splice in your uh, EFIE. Now, what I also did was I I, uh, I looked for a positive that was switched, and I found one right up here in this harness. There's a dark wire right up here on this harness and what I did was I probed all this with a 12 volt tester and with the ignition on this wire up in here actually uh, lights up. 
it doesn't light up any other time except when the ignition's on and the engine's running, so that's going to be my power. I can ground it onto this bar, or I found a ground right here on this harness. That's a nice ground. I can't use this positive wire. That would have been nice, but that's, strict, that's directly to the battery, and that power source is always on, so I can't use it. It has to be a switched power source. So I have my power. I have my ground. And as soon as I find my uh, signal wire, we're going to get this EFI installed. And uh, I'm going to actually install it right inside the glove box to where I can get to the test probes. I can get to the adjustment screw and uh, possibly remove it if I want. And everything's inside. It's out of the weather. I don't have to do anything else because these things aren't waterproof. At least the one I bought isn't. And uh, plus that... You know, we can adjust it on the fly. We can sit there and run it. It's inside. I can keep a, I can keep track of uh, all the gauges. So we're good to go. Hang with me. Be back in a few minutes. All right. Wires have been tested. Ugh. And we'll see if you can see this clearly. I cut a little bit of insulation right there and a little bit of insulation right there. Those are the main two purple wires I found. The one at the top was measuring millivolts between a, a minus 65 all the way up to uh, one volt. Uh, the bottom one was fluctuating anywhere between 100 millivolts to one volt, up and down. So that bottom one is actually my O2 sensor. The, this top one uh, there's several purple wires that show up in the Chilton's. This might be to the MAP sensor. Um, it could be um, a wire that goes over to the the um, distributor circuit. Not really sure, and uh, at this point, it really doesn't matter. Uh, this bottom one was in the same bundle as the brown, which was the heater wire. So I think I've got the right one. So uh, we're going to tape them up. This one I'm going to cut and splice the EFI into, and uh, we'll get the rest of the connections made, and uh, we'll go on to the next step.